growing up, I remember that's how people would look at me. I always felt, or better yet, I always felt that people looked at me as the child that was raised by his grandmother and not his mother or father. And it begins to shape you in a way. And then you start to have these questions sometimes. Is this my defining moment? Am I always going to be the child that doesn't have their mother or their right. father? And when you're a kid, especially very young, it begins to weigh on you because you see the world in a way that I don't think kids should ever see it. Hmm. Right. And you raised a point where when your father passed and he, he lived the life that he did and then how it impacted your relationships going forward. Did you ever feel surprised that something that happened so early on would affect your relationships in your adulthood? What I was surprised by was the learning I've taken or the association I made in that moment. So I didn't realize it until I started healing it, it was that I believed love was dangerous. So if I'm loving and if I let someone close, I'm going to get hurt because I got hurt by my dad, which is one of the closest people, you know? So it's, it's not good. It's not good. You can't, you can't let anyone too close. And that dynamic, that push and pull dynamic, because you want someone close, you want to be loved, you want someone to be with you. So I want to have that. And at the same time, I don't, I'm terrified of it, but I'm not aware of it. Right. And so that, that, that has impacted me in this way. That was surprising to me. And then how it played out in my relationship. That was surprising to me because I was completely unaware of it. How did it play out for you? Like, was it something that was happening, but you're trying to catch yourself into it? Or as you mentioned, it was, you're surprised how it played out. And now it's continuing and maybe you don't have the answers to kind of correct it. Um, well, no. So, so having integrated that death, that has like that dynamic is gone. Okay. So, so that has been resolved to, to a large degree. The way it played out is that we entered into an open relationship together because we had a long distance relationship and we also had certain ideas about love and what love means and that, uh, you, you don't, you know, you don't need to possess the other person, all that. But really, I became kind of possessed by a spiritual idea and thinking and then pushing kind of the envelope with it and seeing, okay, experimenting with our relationship. And so that dynamic, the open relationship was the perfect playground because you don't let them anyone too close. Right. But at the same time, you yeah. pull them close. That's exactly how it played out. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. I remember someone, one of my friends, tell me the same thing where they had, um, I guess it's called like an open relationship, right? Where it's open. And up until you mentioned it now, I didn't think of it in a way that you're bringing someone close to you, but not too close, where they're still, um, some real estate, there's still some distance between the two, whether it's geographically because the person's in another city, another country, or it could just be on an emotional level. But when you break it down that way, love, even though it's something we all want, you're right, it is pretty scary because it's such an intense emotion. Mm. Yeah, well, and also it, it gives you the sense of vulnerability, right? You're letting someone in and when you really let someone in deeply, you show them everything. Like you're not going to pretend you're not going to be like when you first start dating, where you try to just show your best side. Like they see everything of you. They see your flaws, they see your shortcomings and they see, you know, some of the things that you're not happy about, not proud about. And some of the sides that, uh, you may condone even your life, like you or condemn, like you're not really happy about them. And then they reject you. It may feed into that story of I'm not good enough and and then they've hurt you, right? So that is kind of the the, the fear that, that comes with it, with the love. Were you ever to turn around some of the things that you maybe weren't, un, maybe you were unhappy with into some things that you became happy of? Oh, yes, absolutely. So one pattern I had with my wife, which I was unaware of, was that I had, um, I tend to be harsh. So when things weren't going my way, I would just become more harsh and I'd get my way. 
and it runs actually in my family so i became aware of it when when i observed some of my family members i'm like i'm doing the same thing like it's not very nice how they're talking to their spouse right now but i'm doing the same thing yeah right? that's like so, a, you're a 20 year old 20 old year older version of yourself right <laughs> yeah and and i'm like man that's not nice so i i made i made a point i told natasha you gotta tell me when i'm like doing this and and so that has softened a lot where um, i realized this is it's a coping mechanism because i think my way is the right way rather than finding our way and and so softening that has brought us closer together because we don't realize when you do have those kind of patterns they impact the relationship they really can even if the relationship is great in, in, in other ways it still can be something that's kind of nagging you know on the side and it's kind of draining the energy it's just not quite as clear in the relationship because there is there's something in the relationship in the way that you're being in it that's not really aligned to love it's a coping mechanism it, it's something that you learned it's a it's a reactiveness it's not being responsive and so taking care of that really can and has me and natasha it's, it's brought us a lot closer together so i found it um really good that's one one small example of something that I wasn't proud of and I was able to turn around. But to also look at it a little bit different again is a lot of things that we are not proud of or we are ashamed of, they they have a level of identification in it. Meaning I believe I am that behavior or I am these kind of circumstances that I'm living in um, and or habits, whatever it is, or thoughts. And when you believe that I am this, then again, you are going from being expansive to being condensed and you're this one thing. And so now this thing has become shameful or difficult or something you're not proud of and you've got to hide it because it's you. And if you don't, if you can't accept it, how else is anyone else going to accept it? <laughs> I'm gonna go get